Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Welcome to the Fly With Us podcast. This podcast is bringing the art of conversation, self-love, self-care, mental health care and protection, life lessons, love lessons, and everything in between. Today, we're going to talk about women and health and wellness, and we've got a great panel. So with that being said, pick your fence, give us that mindfulness minute for this episode. What if everything you needed to be yourself, mind, body, and soul was already within you? Imagine if this wisdom contained not only remedies for your life, but also preventative practice practices so that we could have fewer problems to deal with. How different would life be if we could harness this knowledge to experience more peace of mind, better physical health, and a sense of, an, of alignment, fulfillment, and purpose? Chakras, which come from the ancient Sanskrit, mean spinning wheel of light. The chakra system is composed of seven main energy wheels that regulate our energetic bodies. Our ancestors intuitively understood and worked with their energetic bodies and rhythms of the season and nature. The good news is the knowledge and practices are not limited to the past, and we need them more in this modern day lives and our modern day lives more than ever. Just like our ancestors, we also can have alignment with the lunar cycles and mother nature and tap into the natural biorhythms, the body cycles that regulate our health, emotions, and intellect. Word up. Word up. So on our today's panel, like we said, it's going to be about health and wellness and different modalities that we can have optimum health in our lives. So joining us today so far was Yamika and Shikesha, the Pretty Priestess. Welcome to our show. You've both been on here again before, so welcome back. Peace. So let's right, jump so into let's, it. Oh, you, you going? You got it? You want me to do it? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I mean, no. It's Ladies' you Day. It's, it's Ladies' <laughs> Month. You go ahead. This, like, this month is for the ladies. <laughs> All right. So, ladies, just briefly, and it doesn't matter who goes first, but what does health and wellness mean to you? When you tell somebody that I am well and I'm healthy, what's that mean? I think your sound might have blocked out. Can you hear me? I can hear yeah, you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, to me, health and wellness, it starts with the mind because where the mind goes, the body begins to follow. So once I start working and building my mind, then I can start working on all of those other relationships outside of myself. And those relationships are not just limited to the people that I'm connected to. It's also connected to the way that I'm navigating my life. So that's me being mindful about drinking water, be having balance in my diet, and just having balance overall in my life. That's how I see um, health and wellness for me. Or okay, okay. It's it's so um, when you talk about health and wellness, it, it's so broad, but. I'll definitely um, add on to what you just said, you know, starting with the mind. But for me, it's actually understanding how I am wired and understand what I need versus what I want. So once I started getting away from what I want versus what I need, I begin to rewire about the things that I actually think about myself as needing from what I wanted because what I wanted was really a replication of what I saw other people want were and replied them to my, applied them to myself. But you know, rechanging that thought process and what I need in that moment changed how I thought how well I am within myself and how healthy I am for myself. So definitely that um, that thought process and that changing thought on how well I actually think I am and how I'm living a healthy life. Word up. I like that. That that that's really dope. Um and uh Shikesha, you mentioned as uh, far as diet. Um so to both of you, how important is diet in on the path of health and wellness? 
um, I, I don't want to bring that old cliche that you are what you eat, but essentially you are. And so life is brought to you through the foods, through the things that you take in. And there's a vibratory frequency that's connected to everything that we eat. So when we start to consume those things that are of a higher vibrations, we start to have a higher vibration experience. But when we consume those things of a lower vibration, we start to notice that we kind of struggle and it's more of an upstream swim when we're navigating all of the mad madness that goes on in this world. Yes. I got to on that one. Right. <laughs> so does. Definitely, uh, that that vibration is real. It's definitely real, especially when you're talking about you know healing, you know, in those aspects of health and wellness is understanding what that vibration means, but also understanding that you are a, you are of earth, and if you are made of earth, you should eat what you're made of. And yeah. mm. like, okay, if I am eating this way and I am made of this way, it only makes sense to eat of this earth. I mean, getting the vital vitamins and minerals within your body, eating cold, eating dirty, you know, and eating fresh and clean, it definitely increases that vibration. But it also, for me, is changing the pattern of how we ate prior. So this is, this is definitely addressing our ancestral behavior to how we ate and the nutritional value, our um, things that we've learned just to um, thrive, not not necessarily thrive, but just exist. And this is what I'm looking for. Right. On survival mode. We've been on survival mode for generations past, but just changing that behavior from a nutritional definitely increases our health and wellness part of our being individually, but for our future generations, our children and their children and their children. So that nutritional piece is very vital to how we live, 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 live and thrive and get out of a survival mode. So, so yeah, I definitely can, can speak to both of those and say that I noticed the difference when I'm eating live food and food that is meant for, for me to live off of versus stopping at churches or stopping at McDonald's because it's a quick fix or I'm rushing, it it tastes good, or at least I convince myself that it tastes good going down. Because sometimes it's really not even good. I'm just eating it because it's convenient. But then I notice about an hour after I ate it, I feel lethargic and sleepy and lazy and I'm like I can't be lazy I still have a whole day ahead of me but I know it's because I chose you know that quick fix instead of something that was better and healthier for my body yeah yeah that's that's powerful and I'm going to tell you something I, I gotta I gotta get in here and say this that food I went to churches not too long ago when I was in Dayton and it is absolutely delicious <laughs> with a lot of low vibration food there's a deceptive energy that's connected to it so it may be expressed in the taste of the food it tastes absolutely magical i remember i had a a, a quarter pounder with cheese at mcdonald's and it was like the best burger i ever had and then i was so sick and so miserable after i consumed that because there's a deceptive energy that's attached to those things. They got scientists that's around them that their job is to make sure that it is tasting pleasing so that we'll be lured into it. And that's how that deceptive energy works that we have to start using all of our senses so that we'll be able to discern better the things that we consume. Because yeah, that churches is no joke. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I, I think... <laughs> you talking about churches and when you came here not that long ago i think also with that uh deception is uh nostalgia nostalgia because yeah. we grew we grew up down the street from churches right. and and like at that moment it's tasting good because it's activating memory sensors mm. and, and you think about 
us growing up eating at churches. You might think about father, family gatherings and where who's bringing the churches? Make sure you get 10 jalapeno peppers with that too, you know, and so it triggers that mind. And that's why like after the quick memory joke goes yeah. away, you feel like, what, what did I eat that for? That really didn't even taste that good. It was the temporary satisfaction. That's really what it is. We're on this quick fix. We got to have it now and right now. So our bodies and minds are wired to what's going to satisfy me in this moment. So it's the temporary satisfaction. Like how you said, it's, it's uh, that deceptive, deceptive energy. That is a real thing. And that's a real thing. So when we're actually on a, a high life, I want something that's going to make me happy. I want something that's going to satisfy me. That's a temporary emotional need that you need to be fulfilled in. So we're looking at it in the in the terms of food and also that uh, that gap. There, there's a gap there that has to be filled, whether it's from the vitamin and minerals, and it could be something from the hormones. So that has to be filled in that moment instead of taking time to connect the mind and the body with what you need, not want. Because right now what you want is a temporary satisfaction that you're gonna get gratification from, from this food. Mm -hmm. And that is the deceptive part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. absolutely. All right, so Yamika, you, you do all things yoga and fitness. And, and I love your, your mantra and the motto that you have that you don't have to be a size two to do yoga. Like that is not necessary. You are a real woman with a real body, working with real women with real bodies. And so before I ask the question, I had to put that out there because I, I so appreciate your videos and your workouts. I haven't been to a retreat just yet, but I'm, I'm trying to put that in my future plans. But I just love, I love that because I'm a real woman with a real body and I'm not 16 anymore and I should not look like it, okay? So, for somebody who hasn't been active in a long time, what's the easiest way that somebody can start a yoga or fitness journey? It, it starts with the mind and getting over uh, whatever perception you have that have restrictions on how you can do it when you start. There's no wrong way to start. There's no right way to start. The only way to start is to start. And you know, you just have to get in that mode where let me do something to move the body. And if it's more at, you know, in particular of, you know, yoga, um, actually there's people like me who change that perception. Because when you have um, true representation of what you look like, you are out there. It's just finding that true representation what you look like so you can feel comfortable in your own skin to you know practice such thing as you know yoga and it doesn't have to be where you have to have your body all consistent <laughs> you know or anything like that um yoga is actually a, a place of being a place of thought and it starts with thought in your breath so when you're sitting up nice and tall and in your chair and you're practicing relaxing your shoulders down and you're practicing breathing, which, uh, oh my goodness, navigate a whole lot of things essentially um, throughout the body, you're actually practicing yoga. And from getting to that part, to actually the movements and the poses of that, um, it, it's fairly you know, easy to um, adapt and perform to in its practice. But I would definitely say find the representation when you look at someone or something that it represents who you are and what you are, what you stand for, and ideally the things that you would, you know, want to do or want to engage in. So I appreciate, you know, you saying that, that, you know, we're, we're, we're real women, you know, out here doing things, but having a representation of, you know, who we are and how to do it is very important. Word, word. Absolutely. Did you want to add on to that, Shakesha? No, I think she got that all the way there. Yeah, <laughs> she definitely did. She definitely. If something else comes to mind, I'll definitely chime in. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, now, we're going back to um, diet, you know, different dietitians and trainers say this, say this way is better, that way is better. Um, in your opinion, to both of you all, is it more important what you eat or how many calories you intake? 
Now, here's the thing. I'm no health expert. But in my humble opinion, I think it is more about the quality of what you take in. Because then I go back to what I was saying before about the vibratory frequency that's connected to a lot of the foods and the things that we consume. So if I'm just eating everything all day, they say like a bird does because a bird like kind of picks little meals all day and everything. If I'm doing that with high quality food, even if I even if I take on additional weight, the impact that is having to my body is at a higher frequency as opposed to me just taking in any old type of junk and in very small quantities. Right. But that's all that I'm taking in the vibratory frequency is still going to be at the same, even though, because I'm not balancing that out with, with a better quality of food. I'm taking in those things that bring my vibe down. So in essence, for me and how I see it, because I am absolutely no health expert, how I see it is, it is more about the quality of the food that you cons that you consume. Absolutely. That's what my experience is. Or, you make a, what would you say to them? I, I do agree it's the quality of food. And it and it also, you know, depends on how active your lifestyle is where you can balance the type of food that you do eat. And it is important to understand, you know, uh, even if it is quality food, you know, how much of those, those calories are you consuming and how much of those calories you're going to burn and how much of those calories you, you're going to you know, pour in um, into your body that adds to your overall weight. And understanding um, um, the type, you know, your, your body type, you know, and understanding where your energy lies most in the at the time of day. And I think, Jay, you mentioned, you know, biological rhythms. You know, we do have those. We definitely have those. And understanding where you're most active um, when you're consuming X amount of calories during the day, it does factor in, you know, your overall health and your overall wellness part of um, just living and thriving. So having a good balance, you know, is key. And understanding, you know, movement is a part of how you consume what you, you know, what you eat. And quality, you know, as you mentioned, is key. So whether I'm going to take in, um, a meal that's over 800 calories, you know, and then another meal that's less than that, and I'm sedentary over a period of time, over a certain period of time, then am I going to gain weight, or am I going to lose weight, or am I losing weight? So combining so your actual intake with how you're producing energy, meaning your um, active lifestyle, that nutrition part does play a, play a good portion on that healthy uh, lifestyle on a daily basis. Or I like that. I like that. I know I've read um, a book a few years ago. I think it's called The Science of Wellness or The Science of well of Health, um, where they talk about, you know, we've all been taught from school that three meals a day or breakfast is the most important meal. And this book says that that's, breakfast is not the most important meal. It says you actually probably shouldn't eat breakfast until you've done something. Because you you should have been sleeping, recharging, so you haven't expersed any energy to need to consume any energy. So I, I tried that for a while and it, it did work. I mean, you know, especially I have a physical job now, so I wouldn't eat to like my first break, and then I would try to eat like a salad, and it's like really helped over the last couple of months. It's because like I haven't expent no energy yet, so. I work and then I get some good food, some green salad in me, and it gives me an energy boost until lunchtime. Hmm. Well, I typically don't eat breakfast just because I don't have time. So <laughs> that's, uh, you know, something I need to to uh, maybe explore and see how I feel, you know, when I do some work first and then eat. Because I don't know what that's like, because I always do a bunch of work first before I eat. <laughs> So, so in keeping with, with our wellness, our health, wellness, our health and our wellness, Shakay said, we know that you are the pretty priestess and your spiritual practice is the bomb. How does somebody start that? Like, how do, how do we start our, our spiritual balance 
as we're starting on this journey to health and wellness. We got to get that spirit together first. Just like Yamika said, it's in the mind. So how do we get that mind together? With silence, with absolute oh. silence. And so for that, what we, in, what we do is we think that there's a system or somebody or something that we need to connect to. But all of that wisdom is from within. So if we really want to start on our spiritual practice, we start in silence so that spirit is awakened to allow us to see those things that either we may need healed in our lives and it'll give us the wisdom and the clarity to be able to do that, to be able to navigate those situations. And then you start noticing that frustration tolerance begins to build. And when the frustration tolerance is built, your ability to solve problems effectively gains a lot more clarity. And when that happens, your whole life experience begins to change because you're not out here navigating these streets thinking that you need to go to hell off on somebody in, out here. Because a lot of times when people are out here, not saying that we got to suffer fools in these streets neither, right? But right. when we're out here and we're dealing with folks, we got to remember that our relationships out here indicate the level of consciousness out here. And so how we're handling people, we got to be really careful because these are stressful times. And a lot of those individuals that are not taking that time to get silent, they start operating in survival mode and they do things that a survival would do. And that tends to trigger other individuals. The most powerful spiritual practice that we can do right now is getting silent and going within so that we can gain the wisdom to be able to overcome all of those obstacles and challenges. That's all I got to say. I like <laughs> Word up. Yeah, yeah. See, Mika, yeah, did you want to add on to that? What? Hey, uh, amen, five snap, and, and do it all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what can you say? Uh, wisdom is what it is. And that silence piece, it definitely um, takes you uh, to a place of self-commitment and dedication on, you know, what the cause is for and the cause is to be better, but not just better for you, but better for other people because we live in an individualistic world, but our ancestry is cultivated. You know, we're a cultural background. You know, we're, we're not practicing in that sense. But listen, we got to silence the mind. But silencing doesn't mean stop. Silencing just means continue the attention. You're increasing your discernment. You're learning how to move, you know, in a way that's productive, in a way that's in true purpose and learning how to do those things in an effective way, in an effective manner, but still doing the work, still answering the call, you know, actually sitting and paying attention and being mindful and regathering and reconnecting and recharging all at the same time. So that, that quality, you have to have that period where you're going to unplug in a way when you still plug in. And that's cre increasing all proprioception, all body mind, all body awareness into the things that's happening and the things that's going on and all around you. So increasing that that spiritual part of your being, hey, that's the biggest part of the pie. That's the biggest part of being well. And that's the biggest part of how you actually can connect inwardly and understanding how you move, how you think, understanding that you're inwardly connected to your external part too. But this is the part where you're saying that this is what makes you whole, this part. This part makes you whole, and this part connects me to other things around me and other entities that I need to connect with. So we're all on this vibrational journey that we connect to, we vibe to. So it's always in the sense where when I'm in my mindful moment, when I'm practicing silence, where I'm saying in increase my faith, in increase my spirituality, you know, in increase the things that I need to connect with. It makes me, it, all, it always reminds me of that part where when I connect with somebody in actual present form, and we've all said this, like, 
you, it feels like I've known you forever, but it feels like we can, we have, we connected in spirit form. We just haven't had the chance or that opportunity to meet in present form. So when you don't connect that inner part from being, by being still and practicing that stillness, we are actually um, taking away those moments of opportunity such as this to meet in present form and to have that connectivity that we need to be so we can actually increase, you know, togetherness on a higher level. So that's real. I, I love that. That's, 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 man, amazing. Go ahead, take it away, Beth. I mean, I was, I, I liked it. So, so ladies, we, we know that we are human and we tend to struggle. So when I'm on my wellness journey and I'm on my spiritual journey and I start to struggle, I start to lag. What are some things that, that people can do to get back, you know, get back into practice if you fall out of practice? Don't feel guilty. <laughs> That's the main one. Don't feel guilty and don't beat yourself up about it. The, the good thing about um, a new day is a new opportunity. The good thing about another minute is another opportunity. So just in that next minute, you can continue. You know, just allow yourself that compassion. And that is one thing that us as servant people, we may not always practice is self-compassion and self self-gratitude and self-appreciation to say, yes, I am human. And self-forgiveness to say, I forgive myself for falling off, but allow yourself to be happy at the same time. You know, allow yourself to treat yourself. Who says that you can't have that piece of cake, but you're having that piece of cake in balance and moderation. You know, and you know what is most important to you in that next week. So for me, I would say, you know, challenge yourself just to say, I'm going to do better. This was just a moment. A moment for it. It's not a permanent thing. So don't allow yourself to feel guilty when you fall off. What you do is just find another way to help you make sense what you're doing and practicing God. Wow. Wow. And you know what, just to just build with where she's at already, because she's definitely nailing that in every point that I would be making, but just to reiterate, that we have to love ourselves through this process and we have to be in a space to just trust divine order because sometimes our stumbling blocks are put there in order for us to learn very a uh, very um deeper lessons is what I, where i'm going at it's, it's, it's put there for us to learn deeper lessons. This is a part for us, like where they talk about in these spiritual communities about this shadow work, right? Whatever. But what that really is about, right? Is all of that stuff that we tend to not really address and not really look at. And all of those reasons for why we're not dealing with that. That's what that shadow work is, right? But when you love yourself through the process and realize everybody's human. Now we go all get up in here lying, saying that we don't miss the mark. We don't fall short sometimes. That's a damn ass lie, right? <laughs> but when we come to terms with that and we love ourselves enough through the process, right? Then we start to really start to know who we are and know who and know what our needs are and not lying to ourselves saying that we can contort like a contortionist and everything and then we can work out like we training for some type of um event or something like that we know that that's not really where we are but when we love ourselves through the process we will encourage ourselves to do better and we will encourage ourselves when we're doing well as well. So no matter where we're at, we'll be in that place of encouragement and self-love. Remember that this is our journey and this is what we signed up for. So the reason why you're struggling with that is because you're supposed to be learning something. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've been, uh, I've been talking to Lady Bouncer about that a lot lately, you know, and, and accepting, you know, the things that you are, the people that you might be afraid to say, you know, this is what I am because you might look at it in a bad way or society might look at it in a bad way. But as you accept that into your being, you're able to push the more positive things up. Like you said, that shadow work is really about accepting stuff like I told her we, I, last week, I was like, 
and I'm a vengeful person. And she was like, yes, yes, you are. <laughs> I was like, I'm cool. Everybody knows I'm cool, but I'm the type of person, if you do something to me, I'm going to try to find the craziest movie style way to get you. And, you know, and I was like, that's how I was. And I, th and I had to think about why I was like that. And I can remember the exact moment of being a little kid and my uncle, he beat me like a slave, like for what I thought there wasn't even a good reason to the point where I ran away from home and I didn't talk to this guy for years. And he was my father figure because my father wasn't around. And but finally seeing how much it hurt him, too, because he was like this little stubborn little, you know what? <laughs> he ain't you ain't talking to me no i am not you don't understand how much trauma you caused me by lifting me up in the air and beating me like a slave right. and and then i started to you know think about that like that's what that's what the key was like i swear at that point being beat like that i said to myself no one is going to be able to hurt me without me getting them and that was something I had to like really work through. I mean, you 20, 30 years later, I was probably 10 years old when that happened. So it's just about, you have to really, like you said, silence and start analyzing yourself and accepting the good and the bad so that you're able to move on. Right, absolutely. And sometimes the shadow works out for you, you know? It does. Sometimes the shadow is, is there to protect you. Let's not forget that. So yeah. that's one of your defense mechanisms, right? And so like with me, like I got a hard time with trusting, you know? And so when I used to work in an office setting and everything, I would always lock up my office. I would lock up my cabinets and everything. I grew up, right? Everybody, I had a very crack experience growing up, right? And so with that, it's caused me to kind of question, you know, whether or not, to question the integrity people in, in trusting or whether or not they're going to take something you know but that's something that i'm very clear on that's where it came from and i'm good with that and i still lock it up <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and like you said that shadow does protect you because i can still be a humble good person and i'll, I'll warn somebody I'll, I'll give you a warning like look man i don't play i don't even know how to play spades dominoes or tunk I don't play I don't play video games. So I'm gonna let you know. I see what you're doing. Okay. I'm gonna give you a chance. So I mean, very good. Go ahead, babe. Move on. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> I was just cracking up because I'm like the you know the the stories that I could tell over 20 years of you being a get back king of all get backs. I just yes, Lord, Lord, Lord. <laughs> okay. So what's one thing that we can do? to help us stay accountable to achieving our health goals. So we talked about, you know, if you fall off, just get back up. Don't beat yourself up about it. But how do we keep ourselves accountable to keep going? Tell your own truth <laughs> and stop self-sabotaging. Um, we, we make false commitments is, is what I, I should say um, when it comes to um, caring for ourselves. We make the false truth, meaning that these goals that we set are unrealistic. And then we'll say, I'm going to hold myself accountable. You're going to hold yourself accountable to self-sabotage those goals. But it's just being real. You know, being honest with your, you know, being honest. Have those conversations that is hard to have, but have them with yourself. And be comfortable having those conversations, you know, with ourselves. If you have a you know a weight loss goal, be real on how what it is that you do, you're actually trying to achieve a good time frame to give yourself a, a time frame. But change how you think. It's that process, that thought process, and what that process actually looks like. And understanding sometimes that process that we have set, it's not always going to go in accordance to how we intend it to go and be open and flexible on how you can change certain things within that process and hold yourself accountable to the goal. Whatever the actual uh, ideal goal is, be 
hold yourself accountable to that goal, but make realistic goals along the way. Yeah, definitely realistic goals. I like that. Realistic goals. Yeah, yeah. Can you repeat yeah. the question? I'm I'm trying to make sure that I'm 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 gonna answer this accurately. <laughs> Just how do we stay our how do we stay accountable to ourselves for achieving our, our health and wellness goals or, oh, or in your okay. case in a okay. spiritual practice? How do I hold myself accountable to do my spirit work every day? You know what? See, it, it the thing is is that it's a holistic experience, right? Mm -hmm. The spiritual practice is the physical practice, is the mental practice. They all work together. It's mind, body, and spirit. When you're doing spiritual work, you're doing them all together. And how I would say the best way to go about that is that I was just given some real powerful wisdom from um, a teacher of mine who told me that there is power in your routines, in your rituals, right? So when you get yourself a powerful routine that's going to work for you, like tailor make it, you know, and you stick to that and it becomes your ritual. Russell Simmons has a book where he talks about sticking to the rituals and never falling off course of the rituals where he allows himself a holiday for about a week where he has that time to be free and do what he does, right? But for the most part, what sustains him, what keeps him in a space of health, what keeps him in a space of mental clarity, what keeps him in a space of wellness all around is his rituals. So he's getting up in the morning and he's getting in meditation. Even if it's five minutes, he's getting a little bit of, um, of, of, of working out in, right? And then when he's doing breakfast, if that's what you do, I feel like in my experience that with breakfast, that needs to be a meal that when you're coming down, let's think of um, breakfast as breaking the fast, right? And what are the type of foods that you take in when you break a fast? You definitely don't want to go down there and get yourself a sausage McMuffin, right? Because when you're breaking <laughs> the fast, you're, you're, you're just, that's a, <laughs> an effect like hitting a brick wall, right? So even if you're going to do breakfast and you're going to bring something in that's going to um, support the digestive process by taking in something like Dr. Savi said, drink some warm sea moss in the morning. Um, yeah, I, I've done that and I'm going to tell you something. It, it, it feels good, but it tastes terrible. <laughs> you know, <those> it <laughs> right, absolutely. And if you can come up with a way to make it taste good, help me out. However, those are some things that will really help you to get your day jump started and making that a part of your wellness journey. And another thing, when I'm eating those, um, taking in stuff like that, I put them in a shot glass and have a shot of mm -hmm. spirulina, have a shot of, of sea moss and have a shot of those types of things so that I can just get it in me and, and, and benefit from the nutrition of that. But there, yeah, there's power in the rituals. Mm. Yeah, I definitely would say you have to be, like you said, on your ritual and the routine of doing and carrying out your rituals. Routine is definitely key. I think that that was, you know, I, you know we talked about on the show before. I'm a student of metaphysics and and being on my routine is like stuff that started helping me open it up, you know, doing the shadow work and really diving deep into myself. I mean, I, you know, we family here. And keep it all the way funky as they say my wife probably can't count how many times over the last few months that i just like have to tell her how much i appreciate you we've been together a long time and she uh we talked about before we sat on marriage panels that we've been through everything and over these last few months of almost being at the finish line where we're about to be uh what they call that uh empty nesters empty nesters Yes. We we partying yeah. like we we partying like we 19 these last I mean we going hard. I don't know. I mean I'm almost 50 years old. I wake up like man, I don't know <laughs> what happened last. <laughs> we going hard and and, Sweet time. and <laughs> she, she like I said she probably cannot count how many times I just have to tell her how much I appreciate you still being here after all of this things that we've been through all these years and she was, she asked me today what did you say uh when when did you realize that i was, that dope? I was dope <laughs> and i said i've always known that 
But when you're going through things, you you might not notice the dopeness or the dopeness doesn't outbalance the irritation that you're causing. Like, you dope, you getting on my nerves. I can't <laughs> recognize your dopeness if you're getting on my nerves. She was like, oh, I was that bad. I was like, don't front. It was the same way for you. I'm, I was getting on your nerve. She's like, a smidge, a smidge. I was like, my, your irritation that you have for me is still waiting at the docks with all our stuff, supplies that we need. <laughs> Sitting on the dockyards. <laughs> you had that much irritation. So don't front. That's, that's, that's how marriage works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like I said, back to the routine. The routine of the ritual is what helped me to open up and like really start have that clarity. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you skip the routine, like you said, you might miss a day, but the more that you're on it, you will be more open. You will see like if your goal is just fitness, if you're on a routine of fitness, you'll start seeing results after you stick to routine. If it's a spiritual path, after you do the the shadow work, the altar work and whatever your modality may be, you will start to see it. But it's like riding a bike. You're just not going to jump on a bike and just take off. You got to learn how to balance steer. You know, it's a lot into it. You have to stay on your practice. I want to add another another one to that too, as um, you are you both are speaking, is the importance of saying yes to you and no to other things and no to other people. And yes to you and no to things that doesn't serve you purpose and value. And that's definitely been my mantra for the last few years. And even as, as, as you were speaking of, you know, you and Lady Bounce, um, I even make reference to, you know, me and my own personal life and my wellness and health and also applying it to my unit and to, you know, my marriage too. And my husband asked me something or even if someone else asked me, my question is, how does that serve me purpose and is it adding value? And I apply those two questions to everything, even making simple decisions as, hmm, what should I eat? Since we, you know, we're talking about health and wellness, what should I eat? I ask myself before I open open a refrigerator, is it gonna add value? And what purpose does it serve? Mm. And you saying yes to me and no, no to other people. Is it adding value and purpose to my being? Purpose to my living, not just existing. Purpose to my living, not surviving. Just purpose to my overall wellness. And those, those two things um, I wanted to share because that's, those are questions that I ask myself every day throughout the day that's actually going to keep me in the realm and keep me in the presence of practicing. As, as you said, you know, what's it within that ritual? And that's a ritual of mine is asking myself those questions, whatever I'm engaged in, whomever I'm around and whatever I'm doing. Is it adding that value and is it adding purpose? Absolutely. That is so Word powerful. Up. I want to squeeze in real quick too. Another thing that's powerful to do that will get you in that space of gratitude is having a gratitude journal, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have to necessarily run out there and go buy one, you know, or cop one off of Amazon. I got them on Amazon. However, you can get a regular notebook from the dollar store and just mm -hmm. start writing down those things that you're grateful for. Because even when my husband is on my last nerves and I wake up thinking this is the simplest man I ever seen in my life. Right? <laughs> those days when I'm getting silent and getting to myself, I love that add value thing. I'm going to add that to my practice, right? But getting in that space of gratitude, when I already noticed that I'm getting in that space where I'm starting to not appreciate what's going on around me or what's happening in my life or where I'm at, that gratitude journal helps you to raise your vibration up high enough so that you can come up out of that, that, that mental negativity thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Very dope. Um, well, we talked about the world and the state of that it's in now and all the different things we see, whether it be news and raising kids and so on and so on and so on. Life in this world can be stressful. So what are some of the things that uh, and we know that stress is a main cause when it comes to illness in a lot of cases. Um, so what are some things that we can do adding on to the things that we've already talked about to manage our stress on a day to day basis? 
doing what you love. Um, I, I find myself going back to remembrance of me as a child. Um, adult coloring um, is one. Uh, and it, it just takes you back into that place where you, you really didn't have a whole lot of responsibility and you weren't you were you weren't looking at the world in the sense of how we look at it in today's today, you know as we are in our adulthood but having those moments just break away from being adult <laughs> has uh, helped me adult coloring is one and um connecting more with earth by being outside or just being outside um even having those moments to go outside when it's cold but the sun is shining i don't care where you are but for me i don't care how cold it is but when the sun is shining i gotta go out i'm, I'm gonna go outside and let the sun shine on my face and you know those moments you know when the world is happening um, i find it most important to uh smile and laugh um and and that part the laughter part because we're all not laughing. You know, everything is so serious. And that does something to you mentally. It does something to you, you know, in the psyche where, um, you know, you're not smiling and laughing. So those are the, the two things helping me is adult coloring, remembering laugh, you know, and also uh, connecting with outside. Hard on. I like that. I, I definitely feel the outside part. Um, I ain't giving it up for women again because I had to get up at seven thirty in the morning to take my daughter to get her hair done. Y'all go through a lot to, for the maintenance. <laughs> but when I came back, I just stood in the driveway and just the sun was coming up and and the birds were chirping, which that irritates my wife. But I love being outside with the Ooh, sun and hearing birds. the birds. Mm -mm, it's just, it, it's just so calming to me. Like I said, those things that trigger those, like you said, adult coloring triggers that memory. I remember driving in the car, being laying down in the back seat. That's when they didn't force you to wear seat belts and hearing birds in the morning and looking out the window at the trees. It's, they just go by real quick, so it just triggers that same feeling. Like I'm not worried about nothing. You just because when you're a kid, that's when you, you in most cases, you're the happiest. I mean, yeah. it's when you're a small child. Mm -hmm. So for me, when it comes to like managing my stress levels, um, I, you and I were talking earlier today, thinking about music. Music is just my life. Like I think in song, I respond to people in song lyrics and they look at me like, you just pulled that out of nowhere. Like, and I'm like, I know, cause that's how my brain connects. So for me, when I'm, when I'm stressed, I got to listen to some music or listen to some music that like takes me back to a simpler time in my life. And now that I'm DJing um, every month at Barrel House, I'm really always thinking about, oh, I got to play this song. I got to make sure, oh, this was a banger. I got to hit this one. So when I have like that downtime and my brain is relaxed, that's all I'm thinking about in the back of my head is, oh, I got to make sure I play this joint. Oh, when I play this, they going to go crazy. So for me, music, I love coloring. I actually have a uh, an adult coloring book with swear words in it. And it is so calming to color some <laughs> cuss words. Yes, if you inbox me your email address, I will email you the PDF of the adult coloring book because I'm telling you. When you coloring words like twat waffle, like that's hilarious to me. <laughs> yes. I love stuff like that. Cause I, and then I had to go to Urban Dictionary and look that up and see what that was. And I was like, oh, wait, that's probably not a word I want to be saying to people. But the color <laughs> with a cute background, I can do that. <laughs> so, Shakurcha, what about you? How do you keep that stress under control? Duh, that is powerful. It's cute. My power went out for a minute there. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wind's going off up in here. But um, for me, 
um, I love what you were saying about being in nature. There's something about being in nature around trees, right? That just gives me mm -hmm. that peace of mind, that grounded feeling and everything. Being near water, being mm -hmm. in water. My biggest thing that I can do for stress, de-stressing is getting in a nice bath right with some salts in it got me some mellow music flowing and everything and that's one of the things regardless of what the weather looks like i always got my go-to bath time for that right oh he had to go get the door right quick we uh man we i don't even want to talk about it. it's gonna raise my stress level <laughs> but but our, you know, those those bathrooms and plumbings are some issues. So uh, praise God that we were able to to have the money to get it taken care of. But it wasn't nice, okay? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. as the preacher say, Amen. It wasn't nice. Right, <laughs> so, right. So he's coming right, back. Right. Uh, he's coming back today to finish. Thank, you. praise. So anyway, so as we're wrapping this up, and I have to thank you both for for coming. This has been just an incredible discussion so what do you do for self-care what's your favorite thing to do mm. my favorite thing to do is um of course as you can see I, I practice yoga all the time um and remembering your breaths um that that self-care all day throughout the day and every minute every second of the hour um traveling is another one for me and finding other non-traditional ways to uh, uh, self-care as taking like a um, tail float. I float in float pods. I, I definitely mm. love those. Um, yeah, um, earthing, putting my feet in the dirt when, when I can. <laughs> In that sense, when it's warm, um, just just walking is another uh, form of self care, and um, bathing is another one. Just to soak in the tub to relax. Say, take a bath. I can't even. You know, I can't remember the last time I took a bath. I am not dirty by any means, but I cannot remember the last time I took a oh. bath. Oh. Oh, I would shrivel up and die. <laughs> you know, I, I get my essential oils, my salt, bath salt, my candles, um, you know, some instrumental spiritual music or my yoga music. And just like, you know how back in the day where you had those commercials that said Calgon take you away? Yes. <laughs> Have my Calgon take me away, you know, moment where I can literally, you know, de-stress and relax and, you know, just, just so, you know, it's just that it's so calming and soothing, just, yeah. you know. Absolutely. Yeah, I like it. I agree. And you know what, here's the thing. I, you know what, you know how you were saying that the music, it comes to you. So I'm going to quote the late, great Bob Marley. I'll shade to him. I'll shade to him. And he told us that one thing about music when it hits you you feel no pain yes right that is and true he also encouraged us to forget your troubles and dance so you get you some high vibrational music like some bob marley and you get your dance on and i'm telling you your cells awaken your mood is lifting and you set the stage for positivity moving forward. That's what I'm doing for self-care on a regular basis. <laughs> I like that. So for me, I, I do a couple things for, for self-care. Of course, I love music and music is everything. But I also treat myself to bad food. So... I might, you know, like, you know what, today I'm going to go to McDonald's for breakfast. I'm going to churches for lunch. I'll go home and have a nice sensible dinner. But today it's about me. I'm going to eat both of my Reese cups at the same time. You know, it may even follow that up with, you know, 
a Rolo or some other kind of like sweet treat or something for myself. I don't do that often. I, you know, I definitely do it in moderation, but it feels good in the moment. Like in the moment, I need all of this Reese's cup. I need every little piece of this peanut butter. I just, I have to have it because it is what is making me feel whole or feel happy in the moment. So not always the best, but yeah. So pick it, what do you do for self-care? Um, my favorite thing is walking meditation. That's my favorite thing to do for self-care. I love um, being on a track, just playing some jazz music or some binary beats, just let my mind just go and be its on its own journey as my body is on its own journey. Um, the track is cool, but I, last summer I started visiting each park in our area and doing it in the park. And that was even more about seeing nature, seeing turtles coming up out of the ponds and all these cranes on the banks. And yeah, that's that's my favorite thing to do. I like that. All right, so it's your favorite part of the show, Sir Pickett. As we get into my favorite part of the show, doom, 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 brain science, science, science. All right, so we've been talking about health and wellness and health and wellness goals. So I'm going to give you nine tips for figuring out what you really want. When we start mapping out those goals, be it for a deeper spiritual practice, more physical movement, or just being a better you in the process. Like I keep saying this stuff on Facebook. The only person you're in competition with is yourself. And the only person you have to be better than is the person you were yesterday. So let me give you nine tips to figure that out. So first, I want you to write a random and comprehensive list of all the tangible things that you have or don't have that you want. So on one list, on one side of the list, it's what you have. On the other side, it's what you don't have. Okay, we're going to look at this list. Then we're going to prioritize the things on this list by placing a number next to each one. With one being assigned the most important thing to the next thing and then so on. Then for your top 10 things on your list, you're going to assign a number from one to five of those 10. Now we're going to break it down one to five. What's most important out of those 10 things? What are the five that's most important for each of your items? Write a paragraph. I know that might be a lot. I'm going to say write three sentences about how having them would change or not change your life. So if one of the things on your list is to have more money, how does that change your life? Or if you have a lot of money already, how does it not change your life by having the money that you have? So then you're going to repeat those exercises until you have a list of about five to six things that you can concretely start to do right here, right now. Then I want you to do the same thing with your work life. So first we have our personal life. And now I want you to do it with your work life. What are the 10 things that you have at work that you like or that you don't like that you want to fix and you want to change? Once you do that, we're going to start working towards updating that resume, making some contacts with some people for a better job so we don't feel like we're stuck. We are meant to do more than go to work and pay bills. I don't want to just live to work. I want, to, I want my money to work for me at some point. I want to be able to live off my money. So then on a separate sheet of paper, I want you to write down the most desired thing from each one of your list. Then collect all the pages you've written to complete an exercise that is going to make a ritual of burning or otherwise destroying them. So as you make this list of these things you want, as you get them, you're going to burn that paper because that's putting it in the atmosphere that is going to happen. It's going to come for you, right? After you do that, you're going to do Shikesha's favorite thing. You're going to sit quietly and absorb the impact of what it is that you want and how you're manifesting it. There is beauty in the silence a lot of times, right? So the last thing you're going to do is look at your three desires that you wrote down, the top three things you have from each list. Is your level of desire for these things the same as when you first wrote the list? So now we're doing a, a checkup. Is this thing still important to me? Is this a thing that I still want or a thing that I still feel like I need to have in my life? Then concentrate on your work-related desires and write about what you need to do to attain it. And if it still feels like you will be complete, then your exercise for that is done. 
So take the time to do all of this, right? And it's going to teach you and show you what it is that you really want out of your life. And you may find that once you start writing down things in a tangible way, that you have what you wanted all along. You just have to process and look at it differently. It's about where you put your focus. Word up. I love that. That sounds real dope. Real dope. Um, so we're coming to the end of the show. Before we wrap up, definitely have to let the people know um, how they can get in contact with you so they can keep building with you as we love to build with you. Like I said, you guys have both been on the show before and you're going to be coming back. So like uh, Yamika said, work on this togetherness and not individualist attitudes that we have. So how can people get in contact with you? Um, they can reach me on uh, Facebook, Instagram. I just linked to Twitter, not Twitter. I just linked to TikTok, and I'm still trying to figure that out. But <laughs> on all platforms, I need a, a tutorial actually. But on all platforms, <laughs> coaching to reach me there. I like it. Shakesha, how can the people get up with you? think she throws up there yeah um i know for sure on facebook pretty priestess she has a page you can get up with her um she also has a facebook group uh divine exchange so make sure y'all hit that up um we want to thank everybody that tuned in to the live today we'll be coming back next week for the next couple of weeks we're gonna be celebrating women for women's history month and if you're in the Dayton area or if you're coming to the Dayton area, please check out Lady Bounce. She will be the DJ for International Women's Party at the Barrel House on March 18th. Yeah. I'm excited. Right up. Um, so um, you can find us wherever you find your favorite podcast. And we're on all those social medias, too. And we're still trying to figure out TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> For real, but uh, that's our show for today. It's your boy Picket Fence. I'm your girl, Lady Bounce. We out of here. Peace. Peace.